Picture this, you drive through a toll booth at the start of a 20 mile stretch of road at 12.30 p.m. The speed limit over the entire section is 60 miles per hour. You exit through the toll booth on the other side at 12.48 p.m. only to find a police officer waiting to give you a speeding ticket. How did the officer know you were speeding without shooting your car with their radar gun? Calculus, of course. Since the speed limit is 60 miles per hour, the fastest you can legally go is one mile per minute, 60 miles in 60 minutes. So it should have taken at least 20 minutes to make it to the other side. You can go slower. But you arrive in 18 minutes, so at some point you must have gone faster than 60 miles per hour. No radar gun needed. The police officer applied the mean value theorem, which says for a continuous differentiable function over a closed interval, at some point, the instantaneous rate of change equals the average rate of change over the interval. Formally stated, the theorem says if f is continuous over the closed interval a, b and differentiable over the open interval a, b, then there is a c in the open interval a, b such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. The police officer knew that if your average rate of change was 20 miles per 18 minutes or 1.1 miles per minute, at some instant on your trip, you must have traveled 1.1 miles per minute. Speeding. Let's explore the mean value theorem graphically using the points negative 2, 1, and 4, 4. Connecting the points with a linear function clearly demonstrates the mean value theorem, since all points have an instantaneous rate of change of 1 half, which is the average rate of change over the interval. 4 minus 1 over 4 minus negative 2 is equal to 3 over 6, which is equal to 1 half. What if a curved function goes through those points? On the interval negative 2 to 4, there must be at least one tangent line that is parallel to the secant line. Recall that a secant line is a straight line that intersects a curve in at least two different points. In this case, there are two tangent lines that are parallel to the secant line. You can imagine how the theorem would hold for functions of many different shapes. What if the endpoints of the interval are the same height? In the case of f of x equals 1 over the closed interval negative 2 to 2, the average rate of change is zero, since there is no change in height. What about a nonlinear function that passes through those same points? The function f of x equals negative x squared plus 5 passes through those points, and there is a c such that f prime of c equals zero. This zero slope secant line scenario actually demonstrates Rolle's theorem, which says if a continuous differentiable function's average rate of change over a closed interval is zero, then at some point in the interval, the instantaneous rate of change must be zero. Formally stated, here's Rolle's theorem. If f is continuous over the closed interval a, b, and differentiable over the open interval a, b, and f of a is equal to f of b, then there is a c in the open interval a, b, such that f prime of c equals zero. Here's what these theorems often look like in practice. Let's take a look at this function. f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 6. Before we begin, first note that since f of x is a polynomial function, it satisfies the conditions of continuity and differentiability in both theorems, since it is continuous and differentiable everywhere. There are times where functions will not satisfy these conditions, so be sure to verify them. Part A. What values of c satisfy Rolle's theorem over the closed interval negative 1 to 3? To use Rolle's theorem, f of a must equal f of b. So we'll take f of negative 1 and plug it into our equation. Negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 6 equals 1 plus 2 minus 6 equals negative 3. And this must equal our other end, so now let's plug in f of 3 f of 3 equals 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 6, which equals 9 minus 6 minus 6, which equals negative 3. Since this is true, there must be a point c where the derivative also equals 0. So we're going to take the derivative of our function. We have f prime of x equals 2x minus 2. So now we want to find where it equals 0. So remember, we're looking for the point c. So we're going to put c in the place of x, minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. And then divide by 2 on both sides. So c equals 1.
In this case, Rolle's theorem and mean value theorem can be interchanged. Here's the solution using the mean value theorem. So the mean value theorem says f of b minus f of a over b minus a will give us our point where the derivative equals 0. So f of b is f of 3 minus f of negative 1 over 3 minus negative 1 equals negative 3 minus negative 3 over 4 equals 0. According to the mean value theorem, there must be a place where the derivative equals 0. So again, we're going to take the derivative of this function, 2x minus 2. And since there must be a place where the equals 0, we'll do 0 equals 2 times some point c minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. 2 equals 2c. Divide by 2 on both sides and c equals 1. See, we get the same result either way, whether we use Rolle's theorem or mean value theorem. Part b. What values of c satisfy the mean value theorem over the closed interval negative 1 to 4? To use the mean value theorem, first find the slope of the secant line. So f of b minus f of a over b minus a is equal to f of 4 minus f of negative 1 over 4 minus negative 1. So first let's find f of 4. f of 4 is equal to 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 6, which is equal to 16 minus 8 minus 6, which equals 2. And then f of negative 1 equals negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 6, which equals 1 plus 2 minus 6, which equals negative 3. So now we can go back up here and plug these values in. So f of 4 was 2. f of negative 1 is negative 3, so 2 minus negative 3. Over 4 minus negative 1 is 4 plus 1, or 5. 2 plus 3 is 5, so 5 over 5 equals 1. At some point in the interval, there is a tangent line with a slope of 1. So we're going to take our, the derivative of our function, f prime of x equals 2x minus 2. And at some point, it must equal 1. So 1 equals 2 times some point c minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. 3 equals 2c, and divide by 2 on both sides. So c equals 3 halves. Part c. For which value of b in the closed interval negative 2 to b is the mean value theorem satisfied at c equals 0? If the mean value theorem is satisfied, then the slope of the tangent line at c equals 0 is the same as the slope of the secant line connecting the endpoints of the interval. Let's find the slope of the tangent line. Take the derivative of our function, f prime of x equals 2x minus 2, and then plug in 0 to find our derivative at x equals 0. 2 times 0 minus 2 equals 0 minus 2, which equals negative 2. The slope of the tangent line equals the slope of the secant line. So we're going to take this negative 2 and set that equal to f of b minus f of negative 2 over b minus negative 2. So negative 2 is equal to plug in b anywhere you see an x. So b squared minus 2b minus 6 minus, plugging in negative 2 anywhere we see an x, negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 minus 6 all over b minus negative 2 is b plus 2. So negative 2 equals b squared minus 2b 
minus 6 minus negative 2 squared is 4 minus negative 2 is plus 4 minus 6 is positive 2 all over b plus 2. So negative 2 is equal to b squared minus 2b minus 8 over b plus 2. Then if we factor out our numerator, we get our b's multiply together to get b squared. Negative 8 comes from negative 4 and positive 2 all over b plus 2. Our b plus 2's can cancel out and we're left with negative 2 equals b minus 4. Add 4 to both sides and we get b is equal to 2. Now let's take a look at a place where we might have gotten a little tripped up. So let's take a look at this step right here. What if we multiplied b plus 2 by negative 2 and solve from there? Negative 2 times b plus 2 equals b squared minus 2b minus 8. So if we distribute our negative 2, we get negative 2b minus 4 equals b squared minus 2b minus 8. Add 2b to both sides. Negative 4 equals b squared minus 8. Add 8 to both sides. 4 equals b squared. And take the square root of both sides. That gives us b equals plus or minus 2. Now there's a slight difference between our two answers. This answer only gives us positive 2 and this answer includes negative 2. We can't include negative 2 because if we look back at this step, we have b plus 2 in the denominator. So if we plug in negative 2, we'll get a 0 in the denominator, which means that it's undefined. So even though we found two solutions this way, we know that there's really only one solution that we're looking for. There are a couple other reasons this is true. Negative 2 must lie in the open interval we're considering, but negative 2 to negative 2 is actually an empty set. And another reason is that since f of x is quadratic, there's only one turning point. There can be two c values with two or more turning points. It's the same reason only one c value is located in parts a and b. A quick graph verifies our findings. That's it for the mean value theorem. I hope that this video helped with your understanding of this oh so important finding. You'll see that it pops up in various places as you discover more calculus. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and happy studying.